Hey, it's Kat. We're going to have a quick look at inserting sound objects. So again, sounds are a certain type of object and they're quite easy to use. Some formats that are supported are .au, .wav and .mid. There may be others that would be worth googling. So a sound object is not actually called sound, it's called audio clip. So we're going to declare that we're going to have a sound there, an audio clip object. Now the sound that I've got is a dog barking. Now remember that any sounds that you insert into your work you must own them. There are lots of actual websites out there with lots of free sound effects. Make sure that whatever you use is legitimate. Now I'm going to use a little dog bark. As I mentioned with the images, you need to make sure that goes in the right folder. So if I go to my documents, my workspace, now I'm working in the Java Basic Objects project and I need to put my pup6.wav into that folder. If it's not in that folder, my program cannot run it. Okay, so I've declared my audio clip dog bark. Then I need to instantiate and initialize. So this one is a little bit similar to the image where we don't say that equals new. We're saying get audio clip and then in the brackets get document base comma and then in the quotes the exact name of the file. So mine was pup6.wav. Now if it doesn't work later we'll know that I probably missed a capital letter or something like that. Okay, now while this is all brilliant, I need to actually have something to trigger the playing of the sound and I'm going to take this opportunity to go over components, events and if statements. So if I'm going to set up some little buttons for play, stop and loop, just to show some of the activities that can go with an audio clip, I'm going to need my action listener. So I import Java dot awt dot event dot star that also means I need to say implements action listener and remember that will pr produce an error because I don't yet have the method action performed so let's pop action performed after paint so public void action performed and that takes an action event object and I'm going to call mine E and put in my curly braces. Now as I said I'm going to have a button for play, for loop and for stop so I'm going to declare those three buttons. I can declare all three in one line but I must instantiate and initialize in separate lines. Okay so play is equal to a new button and I want the text play on that button. Don't forget your semicolon. Okay, loop is also a new button with the text loop. Hang on a minute. Loop. Okay, and stop is also a new button with the text stop. Now remember that these buttons can't actually respond to anything unless we tell them that they can listen. So I'm going to say play .add action listener this. Just going to copy that .add action listener because loop and stop will also need it. I've accidentally put two dots in that one. Okay, and last but not least, don't forget to add them to the screen using add. Okay, so let's just have a quick run and see that those buttons are appearing. They are indeed appearing, but we haven't actually given them responses yet. So what we can do in action performed and this is where I'm using the opportunity to practice if statements because I want to actually see which button was pressed and 
give a response accordingly. So if the play button was pressed, I want to play the audio clip. So I can put in an if statement. Now what I do is I want to check the source of the event. So I can use if e.getSource and I want to ask if that is equal to the play button. If that's equal to the play button, I want to tell my sound, which I call dog bark, to play. And I can put separate if statements here. Basically, I could do if, else if, else if, but really if I do three separate ifs, only one of them is going to be true at a time anyway. So I'm going to put if e.getSource is equal to loop, so if they press the loop button, then I want the dog bark to loop. And similarly, if the button pressed was stop, I would like my sound to stop. Now out of habit, I will put repaint down the bottom there, but in actual fact, nothing is happening in paint, so it won't really make any difference. Okay, so we've got the declaration for our audio clip, the declaration for our buttons, instantiation and initialization of my audio clip, instantiation and initialization of the buttons. I've told them that they can listen for events and I've added them to the screen. In action performed, I've checked which button it was that triggered the event and played, looped or stopped the sound accordingly. Let's keep our fingers crossed and see if it works. Quite a long clip, let's loop it. we can make that sound stop. So that is the basics of inserting sound objects into your work. Key points, remember that the file name must be exact including any spaces or capitals or any extra letters. That file must be in the bin folder of your project. Alright, that was sounds.